This is One on One. My responsibility starts when doors to the future of a child are closed. The city, it blow deep. I know them cold streets. Motif is no peace. Can't trust the police. My mama stay out east. Hope that she good, though. She from Inglewood, so she know the hood, though. Children start claiming games as young as kindergarten. We are not going down without a fight. We can talk about what's going on. Right now, I'm trying to save Chicago. Any particularly part of Chicago? Uh, all of it. The breath of the city, no rest for the weary, no stress, it can't hear me. A fistful of fury, no dollars, no jury, a Chicago story. Place that can kill me is one that can kill me. Hard to ignore me, cause we live the loud now. Fire inside me and things that go pow pow. Label me wild child, my old man don't try now. Yeah, I'm the future, but live for the now now. I want everybody around the world to look right up here. That's some good stuff. That's from Chicagoland, from uh, CNN. It's an eight-part series, and the gentleman who is uh, one of the architects of putting this together is with us. Once again, he is uh, Mark Levin, the executive producer of Chicagoland. Great stuff there. Thank Great you, stuff. Steve. Congratulations. Good to see you again. Uh, you joined us last time. Brick City? That's right. Uh, about Newark? That's right. Um, what gave you the idea for this? Well, Brick City... Got a lot of great feedback. We won a Peabody, nominated for an Emmy. And uh, at one point, we uh, were sitting down with Laura Michael Chesson, who was the executive at the Sundance Network, and Bob Redford. And we all oh, looked at Robert each other. Oh, Robert Redford? Yeah, I saw Redford. him introduce the show on CNN. I'm like, That's right. hey, Levitt's work with Robert Redford. Not bad. That's right. Now, <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. And uh, we said, uh, he said something like, you know, well, if we were going to pick another city, you know, where do you think we should go? And we kind of all looked around, and it was almost like a simultaneously a harmonic convergence. Chicago. Chicago, yeah. first family from Chicago. Obviously, a lot of the issues that every metropolitan area is dealing with, Chicago is dealing with. Rahm Emanuel, one of the most, uh, you know, compelling political faces on the, on the scene, was That's mayor. Right. Um, so we said, uh, let's see who's interested in CNN. Jeff Zucker had just taken over, and they were looking for a new direction. So it all came together very quickly. Great stuff. Now, the characters, um, Gary McCarthy, who is the head of the police department out there, we knew from Newark and before that, and right here in New York City. Um, tough, fascinating, brilliant guy. And also, Elizabeth Dozier is a school principal. Describe her, because people are going to get to know her because she's important. She's powerful and a great educator. Elizabeth Dozier is the principal of Fenger High School, Christian Fenger Academy, uh, which sadly became famous five years ago where, when a young man, Darian Albert, was killed going home uh, in a, a street brawl and somebody with a cell phone videotaped it as he was being beaten down and it went all around the world. Elizabeth <clears throat> Dozier had taken over that school literally 10 days earlier. Uh, so she started in the middle of really chaos uh, and in five years has turned that school around uh, remarkably. Uh, so that was kind of the beginning of the story, but uh, she got a federal grant which helped make sure. that happen, you know, with special programs and what they call restorative justice. And visiting and, parents and getting them more engaged and involved in schools and their kids' education. Exactly. And those programs matter. And sadly, that grant was running out at the end of last spring. So that became part of the story also. Not only how does someone turn a school around like this, but what do you do when you lose the funding for those special programs? The other thing is that uh, early on in the series, uh, Rahm Emanuel is trying to uh, reduce the number of public schools because there are not enough uh, public school students to support the number of public schools right. in Chicago. And so they're, they're reducing schools. The problem is when you reduce the schools, that means those children have to go to other schools further away. The problem with that is that these children and their parents are deathly afraid of walking past certain gang zones, borders, if you will, and what that means because the gang wars and the gang activity in Chicago is so out of control. Let's take a look at Chicagoland talking about that problem. We'll come back to Mark. Let's go to the clip. The mayor's taking a risk with his bold school plan. While it might make sense because of the budget crisis and declining enrollment, many parents fear it puts their kids at risk because they'll have to walk across dangerous gang lines to attend new schools. Just come into our schools and move all our kids all over gang lines and just say, oh, we can build a building right here. Let's take this school out. We don't care about these kids, but it's kids in there. They need safety. Right. The 
Sean's speaking out for the 30,000 kids who would be affected by school closings. You should be investing in these schools, not closing them. You should be supporting these schools, not closing them. We are not toys. We are not going down without a fight. Where's this kid come from? <laughs> Uh, Sean, uh, we met him, uh, Sean Johnson, uh, at, at a, I think he's nine years old, uh, at this rally, and we were so amazed. He was so eloquent, so articulate. Uh, we asked him, his mother whether we could follow him. You'll see him in the second episode, which is on tomorrow night. Right. Uh, and the thing about this series is it's done, it's about all the issues we're dealing with in every major city, not right. just Chicago. But it's told in more of what we would call a narrative nonfiction form, meaning it's characters like Ashan, like Elizabeth Dozier, we follow, like you would in a scripted series, so that you become involved in their stories. You see kind of the issues through their eyes, and hopefully you become vested enough that you say, oh, I need to find out what's going to happen next to Fenger High, or what's going to happen to Ashan's school. Is it going to stay open or closed? But here's the thing. Rahm Emanuel, making tough decisions. A lot of people angry. Some of them calling him a racist. Some of them calling him a murderer. He doesn't care. He said, I'm doing it for these kids. I have to do what is right. Does, some, does a story like this have, have, have to have a villain? And has Rahm Emanuel become the villain? And, is that, and that's the part that, frankly, on some level, started bothering me. Because I'm thinking, he's being a leader. He's doing what he thinks he's right, is right. Whether he's right or wrong, or people agree or disagree with him, he's become the villain. Well, I, you got this little cute kid, third grader. <laughs> right. Who's going to argue with that kid? What? Well, what I would say, Steve, is you got to you know, stay with the whole series, as you know. As we do the, we, as we do this program, I've only seen the first one. I'm going to watch every one on CNN. Because, you know, as in any story, your characters develop, they arc. rise, they fall, exactly, the, the, the arc. So uh, th these first two episodes really build to the fifth episode, which is when school opens. Don't give anything away. And I would say we went there with uh, an attitude was not to deify or crucify the mayor or the city. It was really to chronicle, given that, that um, Rahm Emanuel has a reputation as a politician who makes things happen. That's right. Who gets results. Right. So you want to go to a place where where the, all the problems that New York, L.A., Newark, we're all right. dealing with. But, okay, here's a guy that makes things happen. Let's see how he deals with this. Now, even the school closings, which are happening all over the country, he saw that there were 100,000 less students in the school population, and he decided to take the most radical school consolidation plan in, in the, the country. country. So on one <clears throat> hand, you can give him credit. On the other hand, there are going to be critics like the young man you just saw who said, wait a and second. And the school teachers union. Teachers Union. Absolutely. That has been his greatest foe because there was a strike before we landed, um, right. pr really the largest uh, teacher strike in 25 years. Look, first of all, Chicago's uh, a city like our city that people aren't afraid to express their opinions. It's famous for in-your-face politics. Uh, and second, we're dealing with these massive issues where we see on a national level, state level, we're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. So it is in cities where things happen, uh, which is what, again, attracted us there. Um, but you don't have a point of view. You and your colleagues do not have a point of view on any of this. Our point of view is let's find characters who are making a difference, who are leaders, like you said. But who they're are not willing... characters. They're real, you keep calling them characters. They're real people. They are is real... that semantics? That is semantics, yes. They're real. Let's find real people who are on the front line of making a difference in people's because lives. Because Gary McCarthy, okay. the head of the police there, again, we knew Gary from Newark. That's right. People in New York City you may have remembered Gary from here. Mm -hmm. Gary's not being anything other than what he was in Newark and was in New York City. Well, Gary... That's the kind of cop he was and is. He's not being a character. Gary is one of the rare people who says, I don't care if a camera is around me 24 hours because I always act the way I am, who I am. He is truly transparent, and I give him tremendous credit. Uh, he also went to a city that has a history of gang culture like no other city, including New York and L.A. Uh, and it's fascinating to see we really chronicled the great turn in reducing homicides, reducing shootings in this period from the spring to the fall. And this year, the city of Chicago finished 100 less homicides, which is quite significant. But the gang activity remains a massive problem. Massive. And the gun 
problem. We know that Gary, one of the crusades he is on, is for a similar law in Illinois like we right. have here in New York, which is mandatory minimum for illegal gun possession. The series is called Chicagoland. It is on CNN. The executive producer is Mark Levin. And I want to thank you for joining us. And we continue to be fascinated by uh, the work that you are doing together with your colleagues. And we congratulate you on a great accomplishment. Appreciate it, Steve. Good thank stuff. You. Thank you. Stay right there. This is WNET's uh, Tish Studio. And that's why we bring great people like you in, so we can do stuff like this. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, St. Peter's University, United Water, Qualcare Inc., New Jersey's Credit Unions, Johnson & Johnson, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.